here, it's Amanda from Fun Hands On Learning. And today we're gonna to talk about the activities and lessons that we have um, for first grade for this week of school. And I'm going to go through the new things that I have ready because um, I did keep some things from the previous week. If we didn't get to them, I just leave them in the boxes and we do them the next week. So we just kind of roll it over. Um, and so if I went over this, if I go over the same things again, it'd just be redundant. So I'm just gonna show you the new things that we have and how we've started out the week. So starting out with um, language arts first. So for literacy and language arts, we are using my Phonics for Reading program. And last week we were, I, I wanted to start out um, the school year with him doing long vowel words because um, even though he had already done them, I wanted to review them. Well, we are still doing some long vowel word activities and then I am moving on and I pulled out some things from the third unit, which is all about um, blends, beginning blends. So. Let me just kind of show you what we did. Um, these are the oral phonics evaluation strips um, that actually these strips work for every single unit of this uh, program. And what I did first is just to give him a little bit of confidence, I had him read all of the short vowel words because I knew he would get them all correct and he would have no issue. So we went through this list and it took like two seconds and we just checked him off if he read them correctly. And then I skipped over the other short vowel lists and I went to one of the long vowel lists and I had him read these. And if he got it correct, I put a check mark and he had two of them incorrect, so I circled them. And so that's kind of what we're doing, just as a quick evaluation of how he's doing with his reading. And, um, you know, we have other ones in here that we're not getting to yet, but that is one of the things we're doing. Another thing we are doing are the, uh, these are the fluency um, strips. And I kept the long vowel fluency strips in here that we, started last week and he's still doing those and then we are moving on to some of the blending strips so so unit three which is working on blends and if you don't know how we use these strips these um are wonderful wonderful we practice for fluency and if you're interested in how we use these i would uh love it if you would go back and look at some of my other videos that I've done on my phonics for reading program. I'll try to remember to leave a link below to one or two of them and you can see how we use these fluency strips. I also added in last week we started, I showed you in the last video how we were using the um, flashcard sticks from unit two which is long vowels and I also added in some of the flashcard sticks from unit three. Now what I did for unit three is I decided to put them on rings like this. So instead of using them as flashcard sticks, we're using them as rings for unit three just to have something different. So um, all the other units, I've been putting them on sticks and we've been using them with Play-Doh and all the other activities that I've shown you in previous videos. If you haven't seen those, again, I'll try to remember to leave links below. But for this, next unit I have added them on rings and then we just go through and in the morning he reads and we'll do sc in scale s c st in stop s t um I skipped one goal in glue g l full in float f l you get the idea and then that helps him with remembering the different blends and then we can use the other um well, actually, we, we do that with the ones with the pictures first. So first we do them with the pictures. So dir in drums, D-R, because at first he needs the pictures. Then when he gets good at reading them, then we can move on to the ones so without the pictures. So it still has the, blend, the segmenting dots and the blending arrow in case he needs them. T or E, tree. So, but for the most part, after we've done enough practice with the picture ones, then he can move on to the ones without the picture, usually no problem. And then we have these ones that just have a picture and he has to figure out and match them up with the words. And we do different activities with these and I've shown you in other videos, if you're interested, you can go check those out. But yeah, so we have that in there this week. Okay, I kept the Build It strips, the Flip It books, and the Fill It In mats from unit two on long vowels. We did a lot of these last week, but we didn't get through all of them. And like I said, I wanted to continue working on long vowels, even though we're adding in a little bit of 
of unit three. So anyways, I kept them okay, in here. Now, as far as the activity centers, we did not get to the Magic E-Words activity center from last week. So we are going to be doing that one this week. I kept it in here. But then I also added in some new things. So I added in this activity center is from unit three on beginning blends. And this one has little puzzles, I should say. And what they do is they take a, the three pieces and they put them together. So here's one. And of course, you're not gonna give them all, the, you know, all three pieces and make it too easy. I would give them probably two puzzles at once and they have to put them together. So just like this. And then they have to find the word that matches that begins with that blend. So per, 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 per in pretzel, P-R. And then that puzzle would be complete. And then he could go on and do another one. There are lots and lots of them and they all use the different beginning blends from unit three. By the way, if you're interested in this curriculum, I will leave a link below to my phonics for reading curriculum. You can check it out. You can get um, each unit separately, or you can get bundles of just certain things, like if you just want the activity centers, or you can get the entire curriculum. So uh, I'll leave some links below and you can check that out. Okay, the rest of the literacy activities that I have in here are pretty much the same ones from last week, the easy sentences, the simple decoding books. And the reason I kept a lot of the same things in here is because we had a very busy week last week. We did get to some things, but we didn't get to others. So I kept a lot of the same things in here so that we can make sure we got to all of it. Now I'm gonna go over to math because I did add a lot of new things for math. I'm gonna show you what I, I have. Hey guys, so I also wanted to go through, before I move on to math, I forgot, I wanted to show you something we were doing to memorize our long vowel rules last week, and we're gonna continue on this week, and it was really quite fun. I forgot to show it in the last video. So what we were doing is we were looking at the different vowel patterns and trying to decide what the different vowel patterns were. So for example, if you take the vowel A, what are some of the ways we can spell the long A sound? Well here we can see that in the word pay, we can spell it A-Y. But you can also spell a consonant E like in the word tape, or you can spell it A-I like in the word rain. So what I would do is we would kind of go through our words um, on the fluency strips, and then we would take out some Play-Doh, and I was having him like, so what you can do is you can smash the Play-Doh and make it, well this Play-Doh is kind of drying out, but you can smash the Play-Doh and make it into a flat surface. Okay, so once you have it flattened out or you have the kids flatten it out, then what I had him do is take his stamps and he was stamping the combination. So for the vowel A, one of the combinations is A, Y, so you would stamp that combination. Another way you could spell the long A sound is A, I. So we've got A, Y, and pay, A, I, and rain. And the other way was A, consonant, E. So we leave a space for the consonant and then we put an E. So I was just having him stamp them and then we would go on and we would maybe do like the vowel E and we would look through our book and find, like look through our fluency strips and find the ones that, you know, had E and then we would look. Okay, well seat is E-A, A, so that's one way you can spell it, but green is E-E, -E, so that's another way you can spell it. And then we would get our Play-Doh out and we would stamp them so that he could kind of remember what they were. And it was just a fun way, it was a hands-on way to um, list them out and try to remember what the combinations were. Okay, so for math this week, we decided to move on from addition into subtraction. And this is just because he is pretty quick with addition. I did keep two of the activity centers that he did not finish last week in here from addition. So we will get to those, but let me show you the new ones I pulled out. So in my early learners math curriculum, there is a unit on subtraction. And I took out raceway subtraction center, word problem subtraction center, and bowling subtraction center. I'm gonna start with the bowling one to show you uh, what you do with this one. So the reason I took this one out is because um, my son is really, really enjoys bowling. We, we go to bowling every, it's every, it's once a month. And um, he really enjoys it. So this is a fun way for him to practice his subtraction. So what it is, is it has different cards. So it has bowling pins. 
and pins over here. And then it also has the cards that have the subtraction problem on them. So what the kids do is they take a card with this subtraction problem and then they have their pins here to help them figure it out. So the card that we have here is four minus three. So he would take his pins and he put place four pins oops, on his bowling mat. And then it says minus three. So he's going to flip over three because we're going to take three of them away. How many are left? One is left. So he can write his answer with a dry erase marker on the card. Or I have some number manipulatives here. These are number magnets and these are numbers from a puzzle and he could just find his answer that way as well and he can um you know put it on his card or just show me his answer if he wants in that way too instead of writing it all right so then um you know he would just go through his different cards and do the different problems and see what he can figure out there is just a plethora of subtraction cards here i mean never ending subtraction this cards. This next activity center is also from my early learners math curriculum, the unit on subtraction. And I'm going to take, go ahead and take out the cards. This one is a raceway. It's called Raceway Subtraction Center. So it's all about racing and race cars. And the thing with this activity is I really like to pair it up with some kind of car manipulative. So here I have just these little tiny cars, but you can use anything you want just regular um, you know, like matchbox cars are great, or uh, I had some car erasers that we used at one point. But what you do is they take a card and it has the subtraction problem on it. So five minus four. And then they're gonna use the cars that you provide them to figure it out. So here I have one, two, three, four, five of them. And I'm gonna take away four of them. How many are left? One. And the last step is to go through their, their winner cards here, and they have different numbers on them. They're flag, winner flag cards. And uh, they have the different numbers, and they find their answer, and then they place it on the card, and then they're done. So then we would go on to the next one. So this one's 10 minus three, so I would need 10 cars. Four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. Okay, we are going to drive three of them away. One, two, three. How many are left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven cars left. Then I go through my flags to find my winner's flag for number seven. And I place it on there. And so that's what the kids would do. And they just continue on until they've done, you know, however many you want them to do or however long the uh, period that you have for them to work on it would be. This is the third subtraction activity center I took out. Again, these are from my early learners math So these are word problems. And what the children do is they take one of the cards, they're gonna read the word problem, and they're gonna use their dry erase marker to help them figure it out. Deb had eight counting bears. She put four of them away. How many are left? So what they have to do is they have to write the eight, because they're starting with eight. They're going to take away four and they have to find out how many are left. So here she has eight bears. They're going to cross out one, two, three, four of them. How many are left? One, two, three, four. So eight minus four equals four. They can use their dry erase marker for that. Or another way you could do it is, well, this one's already done, but I'll just show you. So the farmer had six tomatoes. He sold two, how many are left? You can see that we crossed out the two and we wrote our answer. Um, but one other way they could do it is with their manipulatives. So they could say the farmer had six tomatoes. They can put a six. He sold two of them. They can put a two. How many are left? Four. Just like that. You could so one last thing that I still have in his box for this week are our touch point cards. And these are probably always going to stay in there as long as we're working on addition or subtraction or counting, things like that. So what we do with these is we can use these for subtraction as well as addition. So I showed you how we use them for addition. Now quickly I'll show you how we use them for subtraction. So we put our touch point cards out. If you don't know how to use touch point math, I will leave a link below to my touch point math video that kind of walks you through it a little bit better. And also I will leave a link below to where you can get all of my touch point math activities. Okay, so 
let's say we're going to do 6 minus 2. I have 6 here. I tell the children, we already know we have 6. We're just going to count back 2 by using our touch points. So they're going to use their finger and they're going to touch. So 6, I'm going to count backwards. 5, 4. So my answer then would be 4. And we find our number 4 card. Okay, so we use the touch points to physically touch as we count back. And it helps the students um, with their counting. So with addition, you would count forward when you touch, but with subtraction, they would count backwards when they touch. And also you can add on some manipulatives to this activity. If you, you know, if you're working with a student that really needs some extra help and maybe some extra intervention, this time I'm gonna show you with buttons. These are little buttons. And what you would do is you would start, you would say six, now we're gonna count back two. So five, four. So they place a button on each dot and then they find their answer is four. Um, you can use any kind of manipulative you have, but I just had buttons available to show you. But yeah, you can use any manipulative you have. My kids are being really loud in the background of this video this time. I'm sorry, guys. You know, it has been a crazy whirlwind of starting school and busyness. We're busy every single day. Well, last week we were busy every day but one, and this week we are busy every day but today. Um, as far as busy, I mean like we're out of the house doing things. So that is probably why we didn't get to a lot of the activities I had planned last week, and that's why I kept some of them in his box for this week but you know we go with the flow and we also do um, homeschool co-op so we're out we don't do school at home one day a week so we already are down to four days a week is when we do school and it gets a little crazy around here I'm expecting another baby so I have you know different doctor appointments and you know you know how life is especially when you have so many kids we have um, six we're expecting number seven so it's a little crazy around here but I appreciate you following me along if you are a classroom teacher and you want to see more methods on how to incorporate these into the classroom I would love to show you I have some schools that are using my math curriculum that I have been contacted by and um, I would love to share with you how you can incorporate all the activity centers in a classroom with multiple students. And if you're interested in that, uh, let me know in the comments below and maybe I'll do a video on that. But thank you so much for watching guys and we'll see you next time. Bye.